Hey buddy, you okay? Ooh, you're trying to get your uh, chat GPT working on your books? Yes. Having trouble logging in, maybe? Yes. Don't worry, I can help you with that. And is that something that you may also have been having some issues with? Trying to install your chat GPT only not to be able to log in and then going mad as buddy here? Well, stick around and I can show you how to solve that. Before we start with the uh, guide on how to solve the problem and identify what the problem actually is, I want to address one of the key points or the very first key point here, and that is why would you consider uh, using a chat GPT as a separate app and go to old trouble to make it work, which is not trouble at all, to be honest, if you know what, what's going on. Instead of using the books's native uh, AI assistant, seemingly it's already there. It's being used by the platform. It's being offered by the developers of the platform. So surely it has to be the better solution, right? Well, no, it's simply a gimmick. And at best, the integration of AI or the integration of AI into book system is basically a glorified copy paste macro. It can only just copy content from notebook or library and paste it into the query of the AI assistant. And while that can be useful in some instances, there's really no reason why that wouldn't be the case with the chat GPT as well. The only difference is that you have that manual step of copy and paste. So while that convenience is there, I would dare say to characterize it as minimal and not sufficient to justify the shortcomings that the AI assistant actually comes with when compared to ChatGPT. And what are those? Well, let's compare them. All right, so on the left hand side, we have the books's AI assistant. And on the right hand side, we have the ChatGPT app. Let's start with a simple question that relates to the platform and the manufacturer itself. Tell me what you know about books, note, max, the device that I am using here. I'm just going to copy paste this and use the same query in both of them. So let's ask the AI assistant. And let's ask ChatGPT. Right? So already now we're seeing quite a bit of difference in how these things are being handled, but seemingly both of them are giving us information, right? So the AI assistant says the book's note max is a line of, so it's a line of e-ink tablets made by Onyx books known for the large screens, often around 13.3 inches. And already there, if you know and have some experience with AI, you already know in the first sentence that this is an answer that it's giving full on confidence answer, right? So it's gaslighting you to the fullest by not knowing and having any idea what it is talking about, because it is referring to a specific device as a line of devices with a screen at around 13.3 inches, available for reading, note taking and drawing. It features a stylus with a pressure sensitivity, Android operating systems, okay. Its e-ink display provides a paper-like experience and is gentle on the eyes, making it ideal for academic or professional purposes. The device often includes Wi-Fi, <laughs> storage expandability and longer battery life, longer compared to what? catering to users who need a versatile digital paper solution. Okay, so it gives you with full on confidence, nothing. So it's basically doing the con artist act. Here we have the same type of confidence, right? So it says like, okay, I know what I'm talking about. But if you look closely, it's going to say like, uh, typically runs a version of Android, allowing access to third party apps. Hmm, that's kind of uh, also strange, but it gives you pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. But then it actually goes further. And this is interesting. Uh, it referenced my deep guide review observation. So it, by the end of it, it was able to kind of fill in the gaps and understand what's what. So let's try and dig a little bit deeper. Which Android version does it 
use. So simple contextual conversation, right? Because I asked it about a specific device and now I am referring to that specific device. So let's copy this, paste it into here and see what we get. All right, so let's ask AI Assistant. Please specify the device or product you're referring to so I can provide the Android version it uses. So it doesn't understand the context. AI Assistant, yeah, definitely not there. Let's see if ChatGPT does fare better. Books not Max <laughs> runs on Android 6 Marshmallow <laughs> out of the box. So this guy is full on like, yes, I know what I'm talking about. And it is giving you information, but what it's actually referring to is Books Max, the original. So I'm going to correct it and let it know I am referring to the device released in 2024. Let's see if he understands that. There we go. And he understands that. So let's go here. I am referring to the, so, you know, the, the device released in 2024. I am unable to provide information about devices released in 2024 as my training data only goes up to October 2023. Oh, huge problem number one. And the second one is, well, just look it up online. There, like this, go. I can't browse the internet or look things up online as my knowledge cuts off in October 2023 and I don't have current web access. Let me know how else I can help or provide information from my training. This is an illustration of the AI models that we currently have are master gaslighters. So you need to be extremely cautious when using. They can be a really, really useful tool, but you have to be extremely vigilant about the uh, information that it provides because it provides with utter and unshakable confidence some completely wrong things as points of fact. So if you don't know actually what's going on, it can mislead you immediately, like really, really fast. However, the point that I'm trying to make is the direct comparison between the built-in AI assistant and ChatGPT. And if you are depending on or uh, wanting to use a ChatGPT-like or an AI chat model on your books tablet, why ChatGPT is a superior selection. And hopefully this example shows clearly what the issues are. But to kind of summarize it, the reasons why you should use ChatGPT instead of the AI assistant on a books platform, superior language models and knowledge base that is up to date. You are able to actually use your own account, which not only is a point of uh, security and convenience, but it also offers the final advantage, which is a huge one, and that is cross-platform integration. What you do and the work that you do and the projects, especially with the projects that are now part of the ChatGPT, that is just simply locked to your account and you can access it from any device, any platform that you want. Any and all work that you do on the AI Assistant remains locked here. Those are the reasons why ChatGPT is a far, far superior AI chat model to use on a books device than the native AI Assistant. All right, so clearly it is possible to install ChatGPT on a books device as it's shown here in the note on my Note Max and it has full on functionalities. So what's the problem? Well, in order to actually demonstrate that, let's move on to the tab X where ChatGPT has never been installed or logged in uh, to before. The installation itself is really simple and straightforward. There's no problems there. You probably won't experience any type of issues here. As you go to the Play Store, you navigate to ChatGPT by OpenAI, so you don't do the Google-sponsored, you know, garbage stuff, but you actually go to the OpenAI less garbage stuff and you press on install you wait for it to download and install and once that's done we click on enable and open and 
there we go. So now we're entering the chat GPT, which is fine. So you open it up and seemingly everything seems to be correct, right? But we would like to sign up, right? Because the whole point, one of the advantages of ChatGPT, you can use your own account and to have cross-platform compatibility. So let's go to sign up, right? And then we go to login. And then you have your login screen. And I'm just going to press the timer here because imagine that I'm typing in the address and so you enter your email address, then you enter your super secure password, then you go to the 2FA authentication. And before you know it, the app itself shuts down. Hmm, what was that all about? That's going to make it difficult to kind of log in. So let's see if it's just the app that's timing out, right? So last time it was around 30 something seconds. Let's leave it all the way up to 45 or 50 seconds and see if it times out. Is, is it a timeout with the app that's the problem? Well, clearly not because we're past the one minute mark and everything seems to be fine, right? Well, not quite. And let's start going to the sign up and the login screen. Let's start the timer here again and see what happens now. Oops, around 30 second mark, we timed out. And furthermore, if you go into recent apps, you will see that ChatGPT is not there at all. And that should be the main hint to understand what is the problem? What is the core issue? The reason why this happens is obviously a timeout and a complete blunder of how apps are being handled by default by the books OS and their optimization methods. So the problem is that the app is being shut down by the operating system. So you go to optimize and then you say like, hey, stay active in the background. Then you turn it on, you go to sign up, you go to login and then you perform your regular login operations, right? What gives? I mean, granted, this time it was 45 seconds, not 30 seconds, but we're getting the same problem. Even though we've explicitly went into optimize and told it, stay active in the background. What is the problem? Well, the problem is here. You long press on the app and you see this option here, unfreeze. By default, apps that are installed in books are frozen. And if the implementation of how to read if an app is active in the background or not is not implemented properly, which is not the case on books OS, definitely. And this is not a chat GPT isolated uh, issue. This is actually a solution to the same type of problem that you will be experiencing across the platform. It's just that I've noticed quite a few people messaging me and emailing me about this issue because I've been mentioning chat GPT that it's better to use on AI uh, than the AI assistant. That's why I'm using this as an example. But if you go to unfreeze and you unfreeze the app, and let's try now the same thing. We go into ChatGPT, we go to sign up, and we go to login and we start our timer. Well, would you look at that? Let's see if the camera can see. So we are well past one minute of being on the login screen without the app timing out and interrupting your login process. So that is the solution to how to solve the login issue in this case on ChatGPT, but it equally applies to the same type of problem that you will be experiencing across many, many other apps. So it is not enough that you simply say, hey, stay active in the background by going into the optimize. You have to be sure that you unfreeze the app, that you want to allow continuous background activity or uninterrupted background activity like it should normally uh, function on an Android system.
Now that you know how to install and log in properly into your ChatGPT, you won't be experiencing that issue anymore. So you are free to start using the ChatGPT, but in this video, I want to share just one tidbit more of tips and tricks to optimize your ChatGPT usage experience on a books device. And it has to do with the app itself optimization and the display settings. So one of the things that I don't like is the fact that the uh, project pane here or the conversation panel here cannot be hidden in an Android app as easily it can, as it can be done on the desktop app. But that's not necessarily true because there is a setting that you can adjust on your device to make that go away and appear and behave in a much better way. In order to do that, let's go to long press ChatGPT and go to optimize. So when we go to optimize, the first thing that you would need to make sure is active is that it is active in the background and you have to make sure that it is unfrozen. So by long pressing, if it says unfreeze, you need to unfreeze it. If it says freeze, it's unfrozen, so it's fine. The next thing is you need to make sure that the remove startup animation is on, which it is on by default. Then in the color panel, you want to turn the image smoothing on as that will remove color banding and introduce dithering in image related content that is displayed on the uh, in the chat GPT. And lastly, in the display panel, this is the one that changes how the app will be displayed. Now the DPI setting will vary from screen size to screen size. So for example, on Note Max with a 13.3 inch at 300 PPI. So remember, we're talking about PPI settings, they're going to be different between tab X, which has 207 PPI and note max that has 300 PPI. So by default, it's set to 450. But let's increase this to 550. Quick tip, you can always tap here, delete the numbers and go 550, for example. And let's just adjust that. And so let's go into ChatGPT and see what do we see now. And all of a sudden, you can actually see that we have increased the UI size, so to speak. And the ChatGPT app is smart enough to understand that it has a mode, hey, I don't have comfortable amount of screen real estate to display all of this. So let's just hide my conversations in this panel where you can choose them and then go back here and have maximum amount of workspace that you can utilize for something like this. And this is a really, really helpful way of basically focusing your work and maximizing the real estate that you have on your device. You can play around with the DPI setting. And uh, yeah, for me, the setting like 550 for Note Max works fine. And on the Go 10.3, I'm using 450, which gives me pretty much the same type of result. Yeah, you need to experiment and it will directly depend on your device's PPI settings, but that is where you can adjust it and find the setting that works best for you. And the final setting that I would adjust on the ChatGPT once the app is open, you can go to your e-ink center and go to A2 mode on a Note Max or on other devices balanced or something like that. But speed mode, balanced A2 mode seems to be working quite well because I'm using this mainly with my keyboard attached as well when typing. And then A2 mode just gives a good uh, uh, balance of things uh, with a high contrast on and a dark enhancement and light color filter set at default settings. So this type of setting A2 high contrast mode and default color uh, manipulation here gives me optimal results and a good starting point that you can start from and then adjust a little bit further from there and see like, hey, I want uh, more dark content, less dark content, more contrast, etc, etc, which you can do by adjusting these two sliders here. Now you know how to solve that problem that you had originally with the chat GPT. Yeah, but it's sh it sure is. But you also know why it or I hope that you now know why it would be a good idea to use chat GPT instead of the assistant. Yeah, because it's also sh it sure is, buddy. It sure is. I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye.